Very well. So let's move to the second um, presentation regarding um, seismic action, which is going to be delivered by Professor Pierre Labbé. Uh, so Professor Pierre Labbé is a professor of earthquake engineering uh, and structural dynamics at the um, Ecole Spéciale des Travaux Publics in Paris, uh, one of the most renowned institutions in, in France for um, civil engineering. Um, his research fields have been mostly related to stochastic processes uh, and investigation of nonlinear effects in earthquake engineering. Um, he has, we also have had the pleasure of having Professor Labbé teaching in Pavia in the past, um, all the, and very much related also to his work in, uh, in nuclear facilities, in seismic safety of nuclear facilities and evaluation and assessment, as you can see in the second part of his short CV. So he's been very much involved with ADF in France, um, working with over 50, 50 uh, nuclear units in, uh, in France and has also been very much uh, involved with the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna uh, and also covered roles of uh, president of the French Society for Earthquake Engineering, chairman of the OECD group of experts in seismic engineering from 2013 to 2017. So, um, and we could go on. Uh, but I think that uh, we we actually should now move to the to the important uh, aspect of this of this webinar, which is the second presentation of about seismic action, in which many uh, of the concepts introduced before are probably now going to be a little clearer and a little more specific. So, Pierre, please. Thank you, Rita. Thank you very much, Ricardo, for the kind introduction. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen okay thank you very much for those nice words of introduction ricardo so i'm now going to present the uh, seismic action in the euro code eight <clears throat> so first some i have three slides of introduction so first one is about the fact that the provision of seismic action were established by the the Project Team One in the uh, in the general framework of the updating of the Eurocodes, and supplemented at the margin by the uh, PT6 or Project Team Six. Uh, the background document issued by both PT1 and PT6 are available, and uh, you could uh, uh, refer to them in order to have some to, to know exactly the background of all these uh, developments of the Eurocodes. Um, uh, although I, I should uh, to your attention the fact that uh, the, the, the background document uh, of PT1 was issued in 2018 and it is to, it has to be updated to take into account the last developments. <clears throat> uh, consideration on seismic action are mainly presented in the clause five of part one one for which Roberto Paolucci was the major contributor. Uh, they are also disseminated in clause four and six, as well as in the annexes A to D. So in my presentation, I'm going to go uh, through those clauses four, five, and six, and after that to go through the annexes. <clears throat> in the next slides, when you see something in black, this is a quotation of uh, the um, of uh, the, the draft euro code with some words highlighted in red and what is in blue are the comments. Yeah, at the bottom you have the list of the, of the people who were uh, members of those project teams that uh, drafted the euro code, uh, project team one and project, is, project team six who contributed to this uh, uh, seismic action definition. <clears throat> um, to tell you the importance of Seismic action in the in the euro code uh, out of uh, 13 uh, national determined parameters that we have in part one seven are related to seismic action and all of them are in the clause five uh, the clause five the title of which is precisely site conditions and seismic actions and there are three shall statements about the seismic action and the first one is about uh, uh, site conditions the second one is about seismic hazard, and the third one is about the shape of uh, uh, spectra that should be used for description of the seismic action. Maybe as already uh, introduced by Philippe, 
the the major update for the for the users of the Eurocode, the major update is that the seismic action is rep still represented by a pseudo absolute acceleration response spectrum or spectra, <clears throat> but they are not anchored anymore with the PGA. They are anchored at the S alpha and S beta values. S alpha is the value of the plateau of the response spectrum. And S beta is the value of the response spectrum at a spectral period of one second. Okay. So <clears throat> it means also that we do not have anymore the type one and type two of, uh, of uh, spectral shapes because with, this, with those two parameters, we can cover uh, all the circumstances from very low to high seismicity, from low to high seismicity. So now I'm going to go through uh, the, the seismic action in all the clauses, starting by clause four, which is the basis of <coughs> design. And um, this is uh, just uh, to remind you, as it was already insisted on by Philip, that uh, we are um, the seismic action are introduced in this standard to meet the performance requirements despite the unpredictable viability of the seismic motion. And such actions should be regarded as conventional and cannot be related to any specific earthquake event. So it, it means that although every effort is made and was made by the, by the, the drafters so that the spectral shapes and other parameters be controlled by the physics, they should be regarded as load cases and not as representative of a, of a possible actual input motion. <clears throat> so I, when, you, when you start reading the, the code, you first have, uh, 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 at the very beginning of this uh, clause four, you have the introduction of the seismic action class and seismic action index already presented by Philip. So the seismic action index consists, as I mentioned, by this parameter delta, and uh, this is the multiplication of four parameters, the three last ones being related to the one is the, the first one is the consequence related to the consequence class. And the, after that, the next one is related to the site, to the topography, and to the hazard. <clears throat> And when you multiply all those parameters, you find this uh, value of index. And uh, depending on the value of the index, you are either in the very low, low, moderate, or high seismic uh, action class. <clears throat> so the first, as already mentioned by Philippe, the first parameter delta is an NDP. Um, the values, uh, the default values of which are given in the relevant part of the EC8. So you don't find the values of NDP in part one, the values of delta in part one one. Uh, I'm going, uh, however, to show you the value delta in the different uh, parts of, uh, of the Eurocode. So in many respects, the concept of seismic action class replaced the concept of seismicity level. Uh, uh, to, to make it short, this is a t situation we have at the moment in the in a very low, low moderate high seismic, seismicity areas. And the, 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 the definition of the, the limit between those parts are NDPs at the moment. And concurrently, we have in the in the code, we have some some provisions like the one you can see here that uh, some uh, provisions are recommended or not recommended depending on the seismicity level, okay? So, um, and this is regardless the consequent class, okay? The same, this, this, when you have this type of sentence, this is for any type of consequent class. So um, in the next, the, it will be changed in the new uh, version of the Eurocode. The, the limits between the areas will not be any more uh, NDPs, so they, they are fixed by the, by the code. And <clears throat> by introduction of this delta parameter, we can, we can qual qualify the, 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 the provisions that we would like that, that be applied to different types of uh, structure depending on the consequence class. For instance, with introduction of this delta parameter, you may regard as of high uh, consequent class the fact that you built a, 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 an, an hospital in, uh, in this uh, part of a territory 
for instance, for 3.5 meter per square second for S alpha. It will be the building an hospital will be regarded as a high consequence uh, class, while building a CC uh, one building will be regarded as a low consequence as uh, consequence as, as a low seismic action <coughs> class. So those are the values of the delta uh, parameter that are recommended. The same values were recommended for buildings and bridge, and the the, the scheme here is plotted with those values and which are now in DPs. And in part four, they are slightly different. Um, uh, and in part five, there are still only one uh, consequence class, class three. So they have uh, only one value which is indicated. You can see that for consequence classes one and two, they are the same values of delta that are recommended by all the paths of the euro code. <clears throat> so now some words about how we are calibrated these uh, values of the seismicity index. Uh, in the first step, we had, all, we had introduced the seismicity index only by multiplying the seismic uh, hazard by the delta value and uh, the the concept was calibrated in such a way that uh, the adjectives that qualify as very low, low or moderate the seismic action class is the same as the one that qualify as low, uh, as very low, low or moderate or high seismicity areas, <coughs> seismicity for, for buildings of consequence class two. <clears throat> So if you were building a, uh, a building of a consequence class two in a moderate seismicity uh, uh, area, you will, you will be in the case of moderate uh, seismic action class. Afterwards, uh, under the request from, uh, uh, from uh, group two, <coughs> from people in charge of the of the part one, two in the buildings, especially uh, expressed by André Plumier, we uh, introduced the F alpha, those the site effect and the topographic effect in the seismic action index. So, <clears throat> and we retained an average value of 1.3 for this uh, uh, site and topographic effects. Then, Instead of those values, which are there in blue on the, on the, on the screen, we have those values multiplied by 1.3, and this is the way the factor was calibrated. <clears throat> so this is an example of uh, the situation you may have in a country. Uh, you may, for instance, decide that in a country, it could be the decision made in a country that by scaling the CC2 factor to 0.8, then you extend the part of the country in which, uh, for instance, building a CC2 uh, building <clears throat> will be regarded as a low uh, seismic action class. Uh, and it is convenient, for instance, if you don't want that on, on a very part of a country which is of moderate seismicity area, then you have to apply some different uh, uh, provisions in, uh, in buildings. <clears throat> so, now some uh, words about limit states and associated seismic actions. So as already uh, introduced by Philip, uh, the principle, uh, the first the requirement is that uh, you should associate a <clears throat> written period to a limit state and to the consequence class. So a building should be, uh, so this written period should be associated to a different, uh, consequence class sent for uh, limit states. And this is the reason why you have this uh, T with these two indices for limit states and consequence class. And <clears throat> the, the reference, the reference uh, written period that is introduced later on in the code is the one that is associated to consequence class two and uh, damage of uh, limit state of significant damage. And <clears throat> you can also use in place of the of this written period. You can use performance factors, um, and the performance factors which is corresponding to uh, consequence class two and the 
significant damage is uh, equal to one. Those are the uh, return periods that were adopted in different parts of the Eurocode in part one, one for building, part two for bridges, part four, part, part five. And you see that there, may, there are some discrepancies between parts, but uh, all in all, there is a, uh, a consistency in those uh, choices, uh, in those uh, default values that are proposed. And this is the same for the uh, performance factors. You see the <clears throat> these performance factors are very similar uh, uh, in uh, most of the cases. So now the seismic action in clause five, uh, the title of, title of which is site condition and seismic action. First about site condition. <clears throat> So shall conditions shall be identified to establish the size protection. So there is a definition of, of a stable uh, site in this uh, section, in this clause 511. And in case of vicinity to active fault, site-specific hazard, uh, site hazard study should be carried out as per annex C. We shall see that at the end of my presentation. <clears throat> and the site may be categorized in one of the categories a to five given in the table that we shall see on the next slide. It is may because uh, maybe and not should be because other categories are possible. <clears throat> so this is the table of site categorization. The table is, has two entries. Uh, the first one uh, is the shear wave velocity. And the second one is the depth of, uh, of the of uh, the rock, uh, the rock being divided as, as the shear wave velocities of uh, 800 meters per second. <clears throat> so depending on those two parameters, you, you are in one of those uh, uh, site categories. Uh, <clears throat> we, we have introduced VSH in place of VS30. VS VSH is the same as, as VS30 when the depth of the bedrock is uh, lower than uh, 30 meters. Otherwise, it's only H is, uh, it is the, the, the depth of the, of the bedrock instead of 30 meters. Um, <clears throat> this uh, extension uh, at the, 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 regarding the, uh, the shear wave velocity, there are the stiff, medium stiffness, and soft uh, soils. And these categories can be extended uh, down to one, um, 100 meter per second for low seismic action classes. So we, the interest of this new categorization as compared to the existing one is that we have now an unambiguous categorization. <clears throat> and, um, excuse me. And uh, <clears throat> now the next, uh, uh, Item in the in the, the next uh, section is section five two with spectral acceleration maps, and for use of the Eurocode territories shall be mapped in uh, depending on the local seismic hazard, uh, and the, the this is the the, the crucial uh, national determined parameter which is the S alpha as my, as mentioned already with the reference. Uh, which in most of cases is, uh, is um, uh, uh, 475 years. <clears throat> S-alpha is for site category A and for the return period TRF. And the second, as I mentioned already, the second uh, national determined parameter is S-beta for spectral acceleration of one second. And there is, a, we are in Annex A, we shall see a, a map of a seismic, uh, of S-alpha and beta for Europe. Uh, <clears throat> we, the seismicity level have not been abolished. They are still present in the Eurocode and they are based on S-alpha for 475 years written period. And <clears throat> depending on this S-alpha value, they are, <clears throat> you are in very low, low, moderate or high seismicity uh, areas. And uh, for those uh, countries who, uh, who decide that they will still keep the concept of zonation 
for the determination of the for the presentation of the seismic hazard. So these zones should be limited and their seismicity level qualified according to this table, which is there. And, <clears throat> and there is also in the Eurocode a possibility, and this is a national determined uh, choice or parameter, is possibility that S beta is derived from S alpha value. And this is, uh, this is just multiplying uh, S alpha by uh, this FH factor, which depends on the seismicity level. For instance, there, if you have S alpha, which is equal to six and S beta, which is equal to two, then you have the blue uh, spectrum. And if you decide to derive S beta from the S alpha value, multiplied by 0 0.4, then you get, you obtain the red spectrum, which is there. <clears throat> there are also in this uh, clause 5.2, there are provisions in case the, set, the reference period, uh, written period is selected, is selected by the country is not 575 euros. There are provisions in case of the reference seismic hazard is established for site categories other than a site category other than A. There is the possibility that several pairs of S alpha and B, S beta may, may be considered. This is especially the case for Portugal, uh, where there are just very, two very different types of uh, earthquake that may occur. And there are provisions for calculation of S alpha and S beta at return periods other than, five, than 475 years. <clears throat> So now, um, still in seismic action, we have the basic representation of the seismic action, which is the, the clause 5 to 2. Basically, it's, it's just to tell that uh, the, the, resp the, the seismic action is represented by response spectra, and there is a reduced response spectrum. It is now qualified as reduced response spectrum uh, for the application of the force-based approach. Um, this is uh, indicated that seismic ground response studies may be used whatever the, the ground type. So this is a, an option that is permitted to any user to have to run site specific ground response studies and site specific ground response studies are mandatory or should be carried out. This is not a charge, should be carried out in, in if some criteria are met. But <clears throat> the, the interesting point, what is new is that they are permitted uh, on any type of site. So now how do you derive the standard response spectrum? Once you have the S alpha and the S beta values, first you calculate the TC uh, uh, corner uh, period there. Then you divide, uh, this uh, formula is there. Then you divide by the key factor to obtain TB corner period. So key, this is a national determined parameter with a default value of four. And there are some limits for the variability of TB. <clears throat> and then you supplement this with the TA corner uh, period, which is 0 0.02 seconds. And the value of uh, the zero period uh, value of the spectrum, which is the plateau value divided by this uh, FA factor which is by default 2.5. Then you, you complement by the TD um, uh, corner period, which is e uh, equal at least to two seconds and more than two seconds in case uh, S uh, beta is larger than one. There is also in the same uh, uh, section uh, 5.2, uh, a new, uh, uh, formula for uh, the dumping direction factor, which was uh, proposed by Amelio Benevent Climate, and which is for, uh, I mean, values of T that are la larger than approximately TC. This is the same as the one we have in the code at the moment, but it is calibrated in such a way that for uh, regardless the, the dumping, we have the same zero period uh, uh, value of all sorts. Uh, uh, branches, possible branches of the response spectrum. <clears throat> then a key uh, point is the 
site amplification factors. So the S alpha and S beta uh, parameters that calibrate the response spectrum, they are the product of a, a topographic factor and a, a site amplification factor multiplied by S alpha RP, which means return period. So this is the return period associated to the consequent class and the limit state under consideration. For instance, if I take the case of a CC8 CC3A bridge, and I want to verify it at the, the near collapse limit state, then the return period I should select is 2,500 years. <clears throat> then either uh, you have in your uh, national annexes, you have this S, uh, the, the S alpha values for this uh, return period, or if not, you can, uh, obtain this uh, S alpha uh, RP value by multiplying the S alpha reference value, which is the one which is mandatory by multiply that you should have in your national annex. I mean, multiply by this gamma uh, factor, which in case this performance factor, which is in that case is equal to 1.8. Okay. <clears throat> So this is the, the way you, you calculate or you obtain this S alpha RP uh, value there, and then you multiply it by those two factors that I'm going to talk about now. The first one is the topographic amplification factor. There is practically nothing new to mention about it, except that it was in part five before, and is now, uh, it has now been translated, uh, moved into the part one one. And there is a scheme to present it, but there is nothing new in the in the values of those. And um, there is the F alpha and F beta factors. We are the short period and intermediate period site amplification factors. So <clears throat> the scientific background for for what I'm going to present to you is uh, in the. Uh, background document and also in those two publications, one by uh, Roberto Paolucci and co-authors and one by Kiriazis, Pitilakis and co-authors and uh, Kiriazis was a very active contributor to the definition of this uh, F alpha and F beta factors, advocating in particular on the fact that we should take into account the level of uh, seismic activity. <clears throat> so this is the table of this F alpha and S uh, uh, F beta um, uh, site amplification factors. I'm not going to detail, of course, all those uh, points, but I, I would just insist on the fact that we have two columns the, for each of them. On the left side, you have a column which provides you with a continuous uh, variation of the amplification factors. It is the one you may use if you have at your disposal the shear wave velocity and the, and the H800 factors and they are mainly depending on the shear wave velocity and only in the case of the E side, this is also dependent on A. And the column on the right is the, the default value that you should use if you do not have at your disposal this VSH and, H, and, H, and H800 values. The R alpha and R beta factors that you see here are, take into account the fact that this uh, site amplification factor depends on the level of uh, the input motion. This exemplifies, this is uh, uh, taken out of the background document. It gives you an idea of the uh, response, the sh response spectral shape. This is on, on bedrock, and this is for different types of sites. This is for high activity, uh, in, the, in the case of high activity site, and this is in a low uh, activity area for the city. S alpha is 7.5 here, it is two meter per, per, per second there. <clears throat> this, um, this uh, picture illustrates how the site amplification factor depends on the level of, uh, uh, of the seismic input motion. Uh, this is plotted versus the shear wave velocity. So for, for 800, it is always one, of course. And you see how it, it is amplified for soft soils, but the amplification is 
much is uh, lower when the S alpha value is larger. And even for strong, S, uh, strong uh, input motion, it can decrease for, uh, for uh, low shear wave velocity, taking into, taking into account the fact that the response of the soil profile is uh, nonlinear. This is for S alpha and this is for S beta. And uh, here and there, this is the same uh, that you can find in the FEMA uh, document uh, in USA. <clears throat> there is also an elastic displacement response spectrum, which is uh, introduced and which to make it short, which is calibrated uh, by this uh, long, uh, this, uh, long period, uh, this FL factor, which is the site amplification factor for long uh, periods. So there are two examples for also two different uh, level of, uh, of uh, activity. So based on, on that, we have a, a new definition of uh, design peak values, design peak displacement, which is given by this formula, which is there. And the, maybe the point to, to notice is that with comparison to the, what we have at the moment in the Euro code, this maximum displacement it does not, uh, is not uh, correlated, is not based at all anymore on the uh, PGA because actually there is a, uh, no correlation that was observed, observed between PGA and PGD. <clears throat> um, so um, there is also um, a formula for the calculation of the PGV. And uh, this is, these pictures are uh, taken out of the background documents and uh, uh, those pictures explain that we have here in abscissa the, P, the observed PGVs and in ordinate the log uh, of the ratio between what is in the euro code at the moment and the observed PGVs and there was a bias in the in the in the document in the euro code that we have uh, at the moment and this was corrected by the new formula which is uh, now proposed based on s alpha and s beta <clears throat> there are also formulas for vertical elastic response spectra um, and uh, this is basically the same as for horizontal except that uh, uh, s alpha vertical uh, is uh, calculated uh, from uh, multiplying S alpha by a vertical factor, which is depending on the S alpha value. And for S beta, uh, for S beta this is the same, except that the factor is uh, 0 0.6. And uh, the corner period TB is fixed to five seconds. So this is an example of horizontal, the blue one and vertical, the red one, the corresponding red uh, vertical response spectrum for associated to the blue one. And although, of course, S alpha and uh, vertical is lower than uh, S alpha horizontal and the same for S, be for, um, S beta, excuse me, <clears throat> then you, have, you may have some, uh, some uh, periods, uh, spectral periods for which the ratio uh, vertical over horizontal is larger than one. And this is again a, a, an extract of the of the background do, of the background documents that indicates the, the new um, vertical response spectra that we have are closer to what is observed in in the real life uh, as compared to the current ones. <clears throat> You will find also in the document in the section uh, you close five two five two two to five, a table that gives you a, a conventional magnitude and, a con and conventional uh, duration of the strong motion associated to some uh, to S beta values. Okay, this table is principally for use uh, in part five because they are in the liquefaction assessment. Uh, there are some, uh, some formulas that depend on the magnitudes and for the selection, and it is also useful for the selection of time uh, put motion uh, uh, in case you would like to use them. 
<clears throat> so there are some alternative representation of the seismic uh, input motion, um, the, namely accelerograms, and uh, they are detailed in the in the the use how to use accelerograms is de is detailed in the annex D, we shall see that later on, and the minimum number of accelerograms accelerograms is uh, in the clause six. Uh, regarding alternative representation of the seismic action, there is also a description of the special model of the seismic action, which is necessary for the purpose of bridges, uh, where we have to take into account the, the correlation or the decorrelation between the input motion at two distant supports. So this uh, formula is introduced in the is now introduced in the <clears throat> in the code, uh, which depends on the distance between two supports and on characteristic lengths uh, uh, that are depending, and those char characteristic lengths they are depending on the site category. So. Um, to just apply this uh, formula to obtain the, the correlation uh, coefficient that you that is necessary when you apply part two formulas. Um, actually, we had we had the different uh, options for the definition of this uh, correlation coefficient. Um, we had uh, meetings uh, with uh, people. Uh, PT4, we were the people, we are the people in charge of uh, part five uh, uh, under the, the leadership of Alain Pecker. And there were uh, two, uh, two effects that should be taken into account, the distance between supports and, and the traveling wave effects and the filtering effects for soil profile. <clears throat> it was uh, decided, it was uh, agreed upon that the second one is the most uh, uh, important one, is the, the most important one, but uh, uh, it was not possible to ignore the, the, the distance between support. And this is the reason why you have this uh, formula, which is now in the code, which is a contribution by Anastasio Sextos. Uh, <clears throat> in the clause six, uh, we have uh, uh, the, so the, the two statements. The first is that uh, all the country, all the components of the seismic action should be regarded as acting simultaneously, and the second is about the reduced response spectrum. So the reduce, as mentioned already by Philip, now the 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 behavior factor is decomposed into three contribution and the <clears throat> over strengths. Uh, 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 due to the redistribution of seismic action in the runaway structures, uh, the overstrength due to all other sources, which is uh, uh, equal to 1.5, and altogether those two overstrength uh, contributions is RQ0, and QD is the contribution of deformation capacity and energy dissipation capacity. So. Uh, <clears throat> So the reduction factor that is applied to the elastic response spectrum to obtain the reduced spectrum, which is uh, to be used for force-based approach, um, is uh, that uh, the reduction factor is the red one on the picture. So it is equal to the contribution of overstrength for uh, low periods, uh, for low spectral periods. And it is the, the Q factor for high spectral periods and with some uh, record in between. So if your elastic response spectrum is this one, the reduced response spectrum in, in, would be the, that one in case of this uh, Q uh, uh, values, Q factor values. Uh, the number of uh, input motion is uh, at least seven uh, that you have taken is at least seven, except in low seismic action class, it could be reduced to three. Now, some words about annexes. The first one is about the uh, spectral acceleration map. There is a, a map in the appendix uh, A, which is uh, derived from ASHM 20 which is a, a research program which was funded by uh, the, European, the European Commission. And this, 
this is a view of the what is uh, uh, what are the outputs of the research program they are hazard maps they are with different return periods fractals and uh, they are hazard curve and they are uniform hazard response spectra which is the one that are, that we are interested in uh, when we decided to plot the s alpha and s beta maps so um, there is a, an important notice in note in the in the annex a that uh, the, this map are regarded by, by the CN as an acceptable representation of the seismic hazard in Europe for uh, written periods of 475 years. But uh, CN doesn't pass judgment on other results obtained in the context of their development. In other words, uh, CN does not endorse those hazard maps of uh, ESHM 20 at other written periods and not even a 475 year written period if we consider uh, it, that in the detail. Okay. So <clears throat> from this uh, spectrum, uniform hazard spectra that were obtained by ASHM 20, we derive first the S beta value there, uh, just taking the value for one second of the uniform hazard response spectrum. And then uh, regarding the S alpha, uh, we first identify where is the maximum of the uniform hazard response spectrum and then we calculate calculate the average value in a period range which is half from half of the maximum and to 1.5 times the maximum for instance in my example the maximum value is 6.4 meter per square second and the plateau value is 6.175 um, we discussed whether we should uh, put uh, either mean or median hazard uh, maps uh, in the append in the annex A. Uh, it's, this point was deeply discussed by the ad hoc group that was established by SC8 on seismic hazard, and eventually there was a consensus, with the exception of one country, on in favor of the median. So uh, it's the reason why the maps uh, that are presented are median maps. Uh, however, there is no mention, uh, uh, neither in the text nor uh, in the legends, that they are median maps. They are just presented like that, and it's not indicated that they are median maps. <clears throat> OK, so those are the maps that are uh, in the Annex A. Regarding Annex B, um, uh, this, uh, this is about alternative identification of site categories. Uh, the key point that uh, we should keep in mind is that if you do not have at your disposal documented uh, values of H800, uh, if it's not documented, you, it is possible to use F0, which is the, the uh, natural frequency of the sites. And if you have at your disposal this natural frequency then, and the shear wave velocity, then you can obtain the category, you can derive the category of the site. And uh, in case of site E, you need to know also the H value uh, in order to uh, apply the continuous formulation of site amplification factors. And this H value is just uh, obtained through this very classical uh, formula, uh, well, well known formula. <clears throat> if you do not have your, at your disposal uh, F0, or, or you do not have for any reason uh, uh, the shear wave velocity and H800, you can still categorize the site by this. Uh, a descriptive approach and with uh, some words like a very shallow which is defined in the table of site categorization or with consideration of what is a very stiff medium or soft uh, soil and uh, which are uh, presented in the table this is table b1 and which are presented in, in another table and for instance uh, you may have uh, very, very st stiff uh, clays, which are determined, for instance, if you have a van test with uh, 
uh, undrained, co undrained cohesion, which is larger than 300 kilopascal, then you are in the case of stiff clays, and you can, uh, on this basis, you can categorize your site. But in that case, you should not, you are not permitted to, to use the continuous definition of the amplification, uh, site amplification. So you have to use the default values of them. And uh, regarding site specific response spectra, um, <clears throat> there are two, 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 two possibilities. If you are in the case of a mandatory site-specific analysis, if under some conditions this is mandatory, then in that case, the response spectrum that you obtain should not be lower than the one that you would have obtained by applying the, the Eurocode considerations. But if you're in the case of a volunteer site-specific analysis, then you, the, the, the site-specific spectrum you obtain can be lower than the one that you would have obtained by applying the, the, the Eurocode uh, provisions uh, without being lower than 75% of, uh, of the standard spectrum. But it means that if for those who, all those, all those provisions, uh, the, it was the same for the site categorization, is in, are made in order to give a bonus bonus uh, to uh, the to those persons who would like to have a better knowledge of the sites so if you could know the f0 value you are rewarded for that and you are not to blame for that and you are not punished for that <clears throat> and finally last um, annex this is an annex on the criteria for selection and scaling of input motions the the point you sh you maybe you should uh, retain is that the criteria for um, compliance uh, in the selection of input motion has been considerably relaxed. And uh, now the average uh, of uh, your seven selected uh, input motion should, uh, if, you, if your target is the blue spectrum, should lie between the red one and the green one. And um, it has been considerably relaxed so as to permit you to avoid these uh, corner periods, which are totally unrealistic. And um, so uh, with that, this is my last uh, slide. And I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lebe, um, for the very thorough and very detailed presentation, a very good overview of uh, the new features of the definition of the seismic action. So I would recall everyone, uh, especially also the ones that have joined in the meantime, that any question uh, that you have, you may pose it using the chat window, uh, identifying yourselves previously. And we have uh, the first question by Andreas Nielsen from Atkins. So you briefly touched on the horizontal component of spectral acceleration. Has it been quant quantified as geometric mean or maximum component or some other measure such as geometric rotation D50? No, it's uh, recommended to use the geometric mean. Yes, correct. Okay. <clears throat> Very clear answer. Um, while we eventually wait for an other questions, I would have one. Uh, has, the, um, has the committee, is, uh, uh, if you're aware of, uh, discussed the matter of the number of uh, records uh, to be used in case you choose for real, in case you go for a real record approach? So has the seven been kept uh, for say, um, to keep it simple in the sense that we're talking about a code that should be applied generally by many different types of profiles? Or has this matter been discussed eventually with, a, with an idea of increasing that number? No, the, the idea is um, it's, it's of course permitted to use more than seven. And if you would like to use more than seven in order to, to meet the criterion for uh, the, the criterion I mentioned in my last slide, Mm -hmm. uh, if you have selected only seven and you don't meet the criterion and you select maybe 11, I don't know many, and you meet the criterion, so it's it's fine. You can can go with that, and but after that, you have to run 
11 time uh, time response analysis and you have to average on them but uh, the seven is not mandatory it is at least seven okay. and for and for um, low uh, seismicity um, uh, for low seismic action classes this is reduced to three maximum but in the, if you if you decide to take three you have to take the envelope of the outputs and not the and not the average yes so um, okay, so in the meantime, we have three more questions. So what was the technical reasoning behind selecting the median rather than the mean hazard? <clears throat> that was a very long discussion. <laughs> um, if I can summarize that, um, uh, there was a discussion about which mean should we select? Because there is the there are at least four different ways of calculating the mean. You can calculate the mean for a given probability or the mean for a given uh, uh, acceleration, for instance. Okay. And you can, in both cases, you can calculate the arithmetic mean and the geome or the geometric mean. So uh, there were uh, people who are generally in favor of, of the geometric mean because if at um, uh, a given location, for instance, you have the output of a branch of the logic tree is that the acceleration on this place is around one meter per square second. And there is a branch of the logic tree that tells it is 10. There's another branch of the logic tree that it is 0 0.1. So the last two ones, they are, uh, one is in, in excess by a factor of 10, the one is in default by a factor of 10. So. So if you take the geometric mean, they will compensate one or the other. If you take an arithmetic mean between uh, 10 and 0 0.1, it will be five. Okay, so, um, so uh, there is this uh, effect that the, the, the arithmetic mean tends to uh, overweight the, the branches that uh, overestimate the hazard. So people were more in favor of the geometric mean. And after, after that, uh, there were a discussion, uh, different discussion on how, how to proceed. And eventually, uh, the, the, there were also the, on the other hand, there were the idea that uh, at least uh, you can attach a probability to the median and you cannot attach a given probability to the mean. Okay. The probability of accident, probability of uh, uh, confidence probability, and at the end of the at the end of the discussion, eventually people were this were in they were, they were ten uh, countries represented around the table, and nine of the representatives were in favor of the of the median. Okay, the sister, the sister. Uh, so I, I tell you the story. Of course, of course. Uh, Damien Grant from Arab also follows up on this question asking if, is the median also specified for carrying out site-specific PSAJ? No, there is no mention about that. No, 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 no there is no, no. no. Okay, so we have many questions. We'll try to address them as long as we can uh, until using the time that we have. Uh, so Philippe Renaud asks, are there some new requirements on the vertical component spectra? Uh, example, in case only a horizontal component is available? No, I don't understand the point. In case only... So if you only have a horizontal component available, uh, are there any requirements that can guide you on preparing the vertical component spectra on... Uh, Starting from there, you, I guess. You you mean in case you select the time history input motion? Uh, we don't have that kind of input. Maybe if uh, Philippe Renault would like to. Otherwise, it is recommended that uh, uh, there are there are uh, provisions on the fact that you should use the the horizontal uh, the three components of the same input motion, and uh, of the same event. <clears throat> and no, there are provisions on no more than uh, uh, they should 
come from different events uh, with no more than two of them recorded at the occasion of the same event. But uh, okay. I oh. don't see the point by Philippe. Um, in case you do not have the vertical input motion, you take it, uh, you take another one. You take another mm -hmm. Record. Okay, so we have an, uh, another question by Sebastian from uh, Socotec. Uh, thanks a lot, very interesting. I have some questions about spectrum parameter. If we need to calculate for a different return period than 475, we can calculate the S with S475 and 475, but it is not proportional. What is the formula? What is not proportional? Um, uh, I don't yeah, the see question, the point. Yes, the question is not extremely clear, to be honest. Maybe, the, well, this is a long question. Maybe we can, um, we can have it then addressed um, separately. Then we have another question from uh, Foucault France. Thanks a lot, Yeah, Single question regarding the seismic action using time histories. Shall we consider the arithmetic or the geometric mean of the seven time histories? <laughs> it's not mentioned at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, um, would, would I have to do it? I would say I would use the, the arithmetic mean, but <laughs> I don't know. There is, there is no, uh, no indication on the in the document and the subject. Okay. Then we have but another. There are, there, are, there are plenty of small things like that for which you do not, you have still some, uh, some uh, flexibility in the application of the code. Mm. I can't find plenty of other ones. <laughs> and we have a question from uh, the Netherlands on the significant duration. So in the seismic action definition, you show the table where moment magnitude is associated to ground motion duration per site category. Uh, what is uh, the duration parameter that is being used? Is it the 595% or 575% or another? It's 595%. Okay. And maybe the last one, um, Maria from Spain. Is it foreseen that the seismic action in the national annex may be a risk targeted one? Does zero code eight give any guidance on the probability of failure for a specific limit state to be targeted when deriving risk targeted design accelerations? Yes, there is. Um, this is an informative annex. Maybe Matthias will talk about that. I'm not sure because it's not actually uh, on the agenda of this webinar, but yes. Um, uh, if you look at the very, very beginning of the part four of the code, um, <clears throat> um, uh, this is mentioned that the random nature of the seismic events and the necessary optimal allocation of the limited economic resources are such as to make the attainment of the, the objective goals of the code only measurable in probabilistic terms. And Annex F provides a basis for measuring performance of structures in probabilistic terms. So yes, it is uh, included in the code, yes. So yeah, thank you very much once again for your yeah, contribution. Uh, if, if you allow me just uh, sure. probably this question uh, about the different uh, return period uh, that uh, was not so clear. The answer is yes, it could be done because the acceleration level will be higher. So there is, as it is intensity dependent, it will be a different amplification factor. Yeah, so but what, have, what was the question, Kyriasis? <laughs> the question was what would happen if we have a different return period, not the 475 years? Yes. So yes. if it is higher, for example, Huh? So we move to higher uh, S alpha and, and the amplification factor will be different. So, yes, yes. So, uh, so it yes, is you go through the gamma uh, to, to the performance uh, factor. 
at can the right. account. There is no, no there is no difference, there is no uh, discrepancy. It's okay, in my opinion at least. Thank you, Kayazis. <clears throat> okay, so thank you, thank you very much, and thank you also very much for all the numerous questions that we had. Apologies if we haven't managed to answer to them all, so we'll, we'll share them uh, fully with um, with the presenters. So um, we will now have a break before moving on to the third presentation of this morning of this first session. We will meet again in 15 minutes, so at 11.30 um, for the next presentation with Majas Dolcek. Okay, so um, if there is a, if uh, Professor Bento doesn't want to add anything, we will just oh, meet again in 15 minutes. We'll okay. meet in 15 minutes. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs>